Last week, one of the pro members shared a website in our private Discord server under the Inspiration channel. It had just been featured by GSAP as their site of the day on January 7th. The site has a lot of solid animation work throughout, but one interaction caught my attention right away. As you begin scrolling through the landing page, the hero background doesn't simply transition out, it gradually dissolves with your scroll. And as that background breaks apart, the next section of the text is revealed word by word, perfectly tied to that same motion. I found the concept real interesting as it is adding a lot of depth to the scroll experience. Instead of jumping between sections, the content feels like it's being uncovered, almost pulled into view by your movement. Since we haven't really explored this kind of scroll driven shader based transition on the channel before, I wanted to take this as an opportunity to experiment and see how far we could push the idea. So I spent a few hours breaking the interaction down, testing different approaches, playing with scroll mapped values and experimenting with the WebGL based dissolve effect. And eventually, I landed on this small scroll experience that recreates a very similar transition using 3JS. To make the sequence feel more cohesive, I also layered in that same text travel animation as the inspiration, where the words fade in progressively as the hero background morphs away, so both the visuals and the typography evolve together as you scroll. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build this kind of scroll driven experience using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 3JS, and GSAP. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start with the HTML structure. The main part of this experience lives inside a section with the class hero. This section is going to act as the entire stage for the scroll interaction from the initial hero view all the way through the transition into the next section. Inside the hero, the first thing I'll add is a div with the class hero image. This element simply holds the background image for the hero section. This image will sit behind everything else and act as a visual surface. Next, I'll add another div with the class hero header. Inside this container, I'll place an h1 for the large heading and a paragraph tag below it for a short line of supporting copy. For now, this is just dummy text, but structurally, this block represents the stable hero content that stays centered in view as the scroll begins. After that, I'll add a canvas element with the class hero canvas. This canvas is where all of our WebGL rendering will happen. We'll use it to draw a shader driven mask that responds to scroll, allowing us to create that organic dissolve effect over the hero image. The reason we keep this as a separate canvas element is so it can sit on top of the image visually while still being completely controlled through JavaScript and shaders later on. Next, I'll add another div with the class hero content. Inside this container, I'll place an h2 with some placeholder text. This is the heading that gets revealed as you scroll, fading in word by word as the background image morphs away. This section sits lower in the hero and spans a taller area which gives us enough scroll distance to drive that progressive text reveal. Finally, outside the hero section, I'll add an about section. This acts as the outro of the experience, the place where everything settles once the transition is complete. Inside the about section, I'll add a single paragraph with some longer dummy copy and that's all we need for the HTML structure. Now that this structure is in place, let's move on to the styling. First, I'll start by importing two fonts from Google Fonts. I'm using Instrument Serif for the large headings and Instrument Sense for the supporting copy. Next, I'll define a few CSS variables inside the root selector. These are our base colors, a light tone, an accent color, and a dark tone. I'll reuse these throughout the layout so the design stays consistent and easy to tweak later. After that, I'll reset all the default browser styles. I'll remove margins and paddings and switch everything to border box sizing. For images, I'll make sure they always fill their containers and maintain their proportions. Next, I'll style the main headings. I'll target both h1 and h2 together, convert them to uppercase and apply the serif font. I'll keep the font weight fairly restrained and tighten the line height to get that bold editorial look. Then I'll define individual styles for h1 and h2 so they scale fluidly based on the viewport. For the paragraph text, I'll switch over to the sensory font. I'll keep the weight and size comfortable, especially for longer blocks like the about section where readability matters more. Now let's style the hero section. I'll set the hero to relative positioning so I can absolutely position all of its internal layers. 
I also make it span a tall scrollable area. This is important because we need enough scroll distance to drive the dissolve animation later on. The text color here uses the accent color and I'll hide overflow so nothing spills outside this section. Inside the hero, I'll style the hero image wrapper, I'll position it absolutely and make it fill the entire section. Next, I'll move on to the hero header, I'll position this absolutely as well and make it take up a full viewport's worth of space. Using Flexbox, I'll center the heading and subtitle both vertically and horizontally. I'll also align the text to the center and add a small gap so the title and subtitle don't feel cramped. For the paragraph inside the hero header, I'll limit its width slightly. This keeps the subtitle readable and prevents it from stretching too far across the screen. Next, I'll style the canvas. I'll position the canvas absolutely at the bottom and stretch it across the entire hero. I will also disable pointer events so it doesn't interfere with scrolling or user interaction. This canvas will act as our WebGL overlay, sitting visually above the image layer. After that, I'll move on to the hero content section. I'll position this container at the bottom of the hero and give it more vertical space than the viewport. This extra height gives us the scroll range we need to reveal the text gradually. Using Flexbox, I'll center the content and align the text to the middle. For the H2 inside this section, I'll constrain its width and switch its color to the dark tone. Next, I'll add styles for the about section. I'll set it to relative positioning and make it fill the viewport. Using Flexbox, I'll center the content both vertically and horizontally. I'll switch the background to the dark color and the text to the light color, creating a clear visual reset after the hero animation. Inside the about section, I'll constrain the paragraph width and center the text. Finally, I'll add a small responsive adjustment. On smaller screens, I'll allow the main text blocks in the both hero content and the about section to use more horizontal space. This keeps the layout balanced and readable across different devices. And that's it for the styling. Now that everything is laid out and layered properly, we are ready to move on to the JavaScript and start wiring up the scroll driven animation. Before we move into the JavaScript, let me quickly talk about the shaders we are using here. At a very high level, these shaders are what allows us to create that organic, liquid-like dissolve effect over the hero image. Instead of animating DOM elements or masks, we are generating the dissolve effect directly on the GPU, which gives us much smoother and more fluid motion. I'll be honest, I don't write shaders from scratch. For this project, I used Claude to help generate these shaders, and it took quite a bit of experimentation to land on something that actually felt right and worked well with 3JS. That said, the logic itself is fairly straightforward, so let me quickly walk you through what's happening. First, we have a very simple vertex shader. All it does is pass the UV coordinates from the geometry down to the fragment shader. We are not deforming any geometry here, the plane stays flat. We are just setting things up so the fragment shader knows where each pixel lives. The real work happens inside the fragment shader. Here, there are a few uniforms, one to track scroll progress, one for resolution, one for color, and one that controls how soft the dissolve edge feels. These values will all be driven from JavaScript later on. Inside the shader, we generate a layered noise pattern. This noise is what gives the dissolve edge its organic, uneven shape, so it doesn't feel like a straight wipe moving up the screen. Then, on every frame, I compare that noisy edge against the scroll-based progress value. Based on that comparison, each pixel either becomes visible, fades out softly, or stays hidden. Finally, I use that result to control the alpha channel and output a solid color with a dynamic transparency. That's what creates the illusion of the hero background breaking apart and dissolving away as you scroll. So overall, this shader is really just acting as the scroll driven mask, but with noise layered in to make the transition feel fluid and natural. With that in place, we can move back into JavaScript and start wiring up this shader up to scroll. First, I'll import the vertex and fragment shaders from a separate file. These are the two shaders we just looked at. Later on, we'll pass both of these shaders directly into 3JS material so the GPU knows how to render our dissolve effect. Next, I'll import the libraries we'll be using for this project. I'm bringing in 3JS to handle the WebGL scene and rendering. Then I'll import GSAP for animation control. Along with GSAP, I'll also import two plugins, Scroll Trigger and Split Text. Scroll Trigger will let us map scroll progress to animation state, and Split Text will help us reveal the hero text word by word. Finally, I'll import Lenis. This will replace the browser's default scroll behavior with a smooth, interpolated scroll, which is essentially important when we are driving shaders and GSAP animations directly from scroll values. Once everything is imported, I'll register the GSAP plugins. This step is required, so GSAP knows that we want to use scroll trigger and split text in this file. Next, I'll set up Lenis. 
I'll start by creating a new Landis instance. You can grab this exact block of code as is from the Landis documentation. This basically takes control of scrolling and gives us smooth frame by frame scroll updates. Next, I'll create a small config object. This is just a convenient place to store values that control the look and behavior of the effect. Things like the color of the dissolve, how soft the edge feels, and how fast the effect responds to scroll. Keeping these values in one place makes it much easier to tweak the feel of the animation without digging through the code later. Finally, I'll grab a couple of DOM elements that we'll need throughout the script. First, I'll select the canvas element inside the hero section, and I'll also grab the hero section itself. That's it for the initial setup. At this point, we have imported everything we need, set up smooth scrolling, and prepared the core elements. Next, we'll start setting up the 3JS scene, including the camera, renderer, and shader material. First, I'll create a new 3JS scene. This scene is essentially just a container. Everything we render with WebGL is going to live inside it. I'll set up an orthographic camera. Since this effect is meant to behave like a flat screen space overlay, we don't need perspective or depth distortion here. An orthographic camera gives us a very predictable setup where the geometry maps cleanly to the screen, which is exactly what we want for a full screen shader effect. After that, I'll create the WebGL renderer. Here, I'm passing in the canvas element we selected earlier, so 3JS renders directly into that canvas. I'm also enabling transparency because we want the shader to blend over the hero image instead of completely replacing it. And I'm disabling anti-aliasing since this is a pixel driven shader effect and we want it to stay sharp and controlled. Next, I'll add a small helper function to convert hex colors into RGB values. In JavaScript and CSS, I usually work with hex colors but inside shaders, colors are expected as normalized RGB values. So this function takes a hex string, extracts the red, green and blue channels and converts them into a format that shader can use safely. If for any reason the conversion fails, I'll return a fallback color instead. This prevents the shader from breaking if something unexpected happens. After that, I'll handle resizing. I'll create a resize function where I read the current width and height of the hero section and then update the renderer size to match it exactly. This keeps the WebGL canvas perfectly aligned with the hero at all times. I also update the renderer's pixel ratio here so the output stays crisp on high density displays without pushing the GPU harder than it needs to. Once the function is defined, I'll call it right away so everything is sized correctly on load. Then I'll match it to the window resize event so the canvas stays in sync if the viewport changes. Now that the renderer is ready, I'll move on to creating the actual shader layer. First, I'll convert the color from the config object into RGB values using the helper function we just wrote. This color will be passed directly into the shader as a uniform. Then I'll create a simple plane geometry. This plane acts as a full screen surface. We are not displaying any 3D objects here, just giving the shader something to render onto. Next, I'll create a shader material. Here, I pass in the vertex and fragment shaders we imported earlier. I also define a set of uniforms. These are values that JavaScript can update in real time and the shader can react to immediately. One uniform will track scroll progress, another stores the current resolution which shader uses to stay responsive and correctly scaled. There is also a color uniform for the dissolve overlay and another one that controls how soft and spread out the dissolve edge feels. I enable transparency on the material so the shader can smoothly fade in and out over the image instead of acting like a solid layer. With the geometry and material ready, I'll create a mesh by combining the two. This mesh represents our full screen shader plane. Once it's created, I'll add it to the scene so it becomes part of the render loop. Next, I'll define a variable to store scroll progress. This value is going to act as the connection point between scrolling and the shader animation. Now, I'll set up the animation loop. Inside this loop, I update the shader's progress uniforms using the current scroll progress value. Then I render the scene using the camera. Finally, I request the next animation frame so this keeps running continuously. This ensures the shader updates smoothly on every frame rather than jumping between states. Once the loop is defined, I call it once to kick everything off. Now, I'll connect Landis scroll values to the shader. Every time Landis emits a scroll event, I calculate how far the user has scrolled relative to the hero section. I normalize that value so it progresses smoothly from start to end as the hero scrolls out of view. I also apply a small multiplier here to control the speed of the dissolve so the effect doesn't feel too slow or too aggressive. The result gets stored in the scroll progress variable which is then fed directly into the shader on every frame. This is what makes the dissolve feel physically tied to scrolling, not triggered by scroll but continuously driven by it. Finally, I handle one last resize case. Whenever the window resizes, I update the resolution uniform inside the shader. This ensures the noise pattern and dissolve edge stay correctly scaled and don't stretch or break after a resize. 
At this point, the WebGL layer is fully wired up. It's rendering continuously, responding to scroll, and staying in sync with the layout. Next, we'll move on to animating the text, where we split the hero heading into words and reveal them progressively as the background dissolves away. First, I'll grab the heading inside the hero content section. Then I'll use split text on this element and split it by words. Instead of animating the entire heading as one block, this gives us individual DOM elements for each word, which lets us control their visibility independently. Once the text is split, I store all the generated word elements in a variable. We'll be looping over these and animating them based on scroll position. Before doing anything else, I'll set the initial opacity of all the words to zero. So visually, none of the text is visible when the section first comes into view. Now I'll create a scroll trigger for this section. I'll set the trigger to the hero content container itself. This animation starts once the top of this section reaches a certain point in the viewport and it finishes once the bottom of this section passes through. Instead of using a GSAP timeline here, I'm using the on update callback. This gives me direct access to scroll progress as a normalized value between 0 and 1, which is perfect for mapping scroll to multiple elements manually. Inside on update callback, the first thing I do is read the current scroll progress. This value represents how far the user has scrolled through this section. Then I calculate the total number of words we are animating. This lets us divide the scroll range evenly across all the words. Now comes the key part. I loop through each word and calculate its individual scroll window. Each word gets its own slice of the overall progress range for a given word. I calculate when it should start fading in and when it should be fully visible based on its index in the list. I start by assuming the word is fully invisible. If the scroll progress has passed the endpoint for that word, I set its opacity to fully visible. If the scroll progress is somewhere between the start and end range of that word, I calculate a local fade value based on how far the scroll has progressed through that range. This gives us a smooth proportional fade, not a stepped or delayed animation. Finally, I apply that opacity value to the word using GSAP. I keep the duration very short and allow overwriting so the opacity stays tightly synced to scroll and never lags behind. The result is a word by word reveal that's completely driven by scroll position. As the background dissolves away through the shader, the text emerges gradually word by word creating a single cohesive transition instead of two separate effects happening independently. And with that, the entire scroll experience is wired together. The shader, the layout, and the typography are all responding to the same scroll input. That wraps up the implementation for this project. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.